In trading, you only need three candles and they form your swing highs and your swing lows. Your swing points are your most significant points in price action because in price action, every single candle, there's an upper wick and there is a bottom wick. So there is no clear significant point in price. And that is where you have your swing highs and swing lows come into play because they are the most significant points in time. They will determine whether the trend is going to continue or if the trend is going to reverse and they are points where there is a significant pull in buy side or sell side liquidity. So let's begin with recapping on what a swing high and swing low is. If you look here, remember three candles, right? So one, two, three, a swing low, your first candle's bottom wick and your third candle's bottom wick is higher than your middle candle's bottom wick. So here, one, two, three, right? This bottom wick is the lowest out of them three. So this becomes your swing low. Under the swing low, there is a significant pool of liquidity. And if you look over here, three candles again, one, two, three. Your first candle's upper wick and your third candle's upper wick is lower than your middle candle's upper wick. So that means this middle candle becomes your swing high. Above this, there is a significant pool in buy side liquidity. Now, depending on your higher time frame direction, this is where you could determine whether your swing lows or swing highs are going to be your targets. And because that's the case, the opposing swing point that isn't your target it should ideally form at PDRAs to support price higher. So if you have a look at this bullish higher time frame direction, right? In hindsight, swing highs are the ones that are getting disrespected. You can see here, they'll swing high there, swing high there, they both get disrespected. And then here you also have another swing high. So these three swing highs, as well as here, they all get disrespected because your higher time frame direction is bullish. Whereas if you look at these swing lows, yeah, they are staying intact. And the important thing here is they are forming off of your higher time frame or your relative time frames discount raise. So you can see this one form off of this bullish order block, right? This one over here formed of this imbalance and so on. So the point here is when trading sole price action, the things you should be looking out for the most are your swing points because they become your draws of liquidity or they become points in where you are not expecting price to trade through. Because if price trades through that, that could possibly indicate a possible market reversal. So this is how you can start to utilize it in your trading. If you look closely, every time a swing low gets formed in a higher time frame bullish direction, look at the candle that follows after your swing pattern gets formed. One, two, three, swing low. Fourth candle has a strong bullish closure. Same thing here. Fourth candle has a strong bullish closure. You can count this one as well, right? Strong bullish closure. And you can see that the ones that are opposing your higher time frame bullish direction, if you remember, these swing highs, the fourth candle doesn't necessarily give you an aggressive move lower. Here, that fourth candle gives you a bullish retracement before the fifth candle gives you the aggressive move lower. But this aggressive move lower was just to rebalance this imbalance over here, or if you want to use this balance price range, to form a swing low and push price up higher, right? Same thing here. If you look at this swing high, one, two, three, the fourth candle gave you a bullish closure. And even if this was a bearish closure, look at the candle, it almost formed a doji, right? So there wasn't strong enough conviction to continue lower or continue higher. Whereas when you look at the swing points that are in line with your higher time frame direction, most of the time, the fourth candle always gives you a strong move in that intended direction. Same thing here. You have the swing low over here. Fourth candle gives you a nice bullish closure. So that is where you can start to catch your longs in a higher time frame bullish direction. And ideally, if you want to hold your trade for longer, they should always be targeted at your swing highs because your swing highs become your draws on liquidity on your higher time frame bullish direction. Vice versa, if it was bearish, if your higher time frame direction was bearish, your swing lows should ideally become your targets and your swing highs should be the ones that stay respected. So. The reason why your swing points are so significant is because here on the hourly time frame, remember price is fractal. So even though I'm on the hourly time frame, it applies to every single time frame. But here, let's say the hourly is your higher time frame. In this specific scenario, when the swing low gets formed, or any swing point for that matter, so even swing highs, on the lower time frame, that is just a clear market structural break on the lower time frame. And ideally, because you get the first candle in a swing point, 
that should be the one that is respecting further discount raise and disrespecting premium raise in a swing low and vice versa if it was a swing high. Because a lot of times, by the time you get the second candle, so if I go here, one, two, by the time you get the second candle and has a bearish closure, that is likely going to be where you have your market reversal anyway. So if we drop down to the five minute, you can see here, you already had a market reversal. But when you had that third candle print, this is where price really solidifies that market direction. Because here, if you look at the 10 a.m. candle, this was the start of your third hourly candle. And you can see that this third hourly candle, all it done was respect premium raise and further disrespect discount raise. Because here you had a swing high to get this form. So that is why your swing points are so significant. Because by the time the full free candle pattern gets formed, right, you had already had a market reversal and the third candle likely has already given you further respect of premium raise and disrespect of discount raise in a bearish scenario. Vice versa if it was bullish. By the time you have that third candle print in a swing low, that third candle would have further respected discount raise and disrespected premium raise. The second candle is most likely going to already have given you that market structure reversal to go higher. So to clear things up, if we have a look at examples now, you can see here, this is where you had a market structure break to the downside. This becomes your market structure break. And here price is currently coming back into this premium array. If you look here, this should ideally be our overall drawn liquidity. And here you have your accumulation phases. So this entire price section from here to potentially all day until price takes out this offset liquidity, this is just your market maker sell model after you had a smart money reversal with this market structure break. So that means we are now in the sell side of this curve. This implies that swing highs we should ideally see stay protected and support price to go lower. Swing lows should become your draws on liquidity. Now, bear in mind, because I said swing points hold a large pool of liquidity, that doesn't necessarily mean every single swing high is going to stay protected in a bearish scenario. The reason being is because price can't just move in basic market structure, right? You should know this by now. It should always move in advanced market structure. So swing highs could get swept for buy side liquidity before price distributes lower and takes out sell side liquidity. When price sweeps buy side liquidity, all it is doing is accumulating more short positions before distributing it lower and pairing up their short positions with sell side liquidity over here to exit out of their positions. So yeah, let's have a look at what we have here. Keep playing price out. You can see that price forms a swing high. One, two, three. This middle candle's upper wick had a higher wick compared to your first and third candle's wick. So that is your swing high. And you can see how that swing high supported price to distribute lower and take out this swing low, which should ideally be your draw on liquidity because you are in a bearish scenario after you had this market structure break to the downside. But as you can see here, price doesn't have a full body closure past this wick. So there's not enough conviction for price to keep dropping lower yet. And instead, price distributes higher. This distribution higher simply came back to reclaim this premium array. But you can see here that price is still in a bearish scenario. It hasn't exactly reversed yet because it's still respecting this premium array or this balance price range over here. And if you draw out the 50% level, you can see the bodies are still closing within the 50% level. So it's still showing clear signs of respect of a premium array. Now, if you zoom in closer, this has a small wick and this also has a small wick. This becomes your swing high because this is the highest wick out of your three candles and this highest wick is in the middle. So this is even more confluence in price holding bearish structure to continue lower because this is your significant market structure break. The fact that a swing high gets formed in a premium array, remember what I mentioned, when swing points form in a PD array, it makes it much more significant because that adds more confluence on this overall key level. So if price was to come back and take out this swing high, not only is it just taking out a swing high, but it is also taking out this premium array. So essentially, you, the way you can think of it is it's already taking out two premium array. So that is more than enough confluence to determine a market reversal to the upside. Hence why swing points that form in discount or premium arrays are extremely significant. Which is why when we have a swing high that gets formed in this premium array, we could anticipate for price to continue lower because your overall direction is still bearish. And as you can see here, one, two, three. Fourth candle gives you a nice bearish closure. That is where you are just getting the move lower. 
And you can see here, an imbalance gets created. Swing high, one, two, three. Second candle, highest wick, another swing high gets implemented here. So like I said, this is why your free candle pattern is so important. Because what this does is that it just further reinforces the idea that we're going to continue lower and this become our next draw on liquidity. If you notice by now, you also had opposing immediate swing points over here. Here you had one, one, two, three, lowest second wick. This forms your swing low. And this is the one where price trades through it with ease. Right, so focusing on this entire segment price from here to here. An imbalance gets created along with a swing low. Price retraces into this imbalance, swing high gets created, and it pushes through with a full body closure past this swing low. So from this price action alone, there is at least three confluences that is supporting price to continue lower, right? Get this imbalance in the form of your premium array, respect of that with a swing high, and a disrespect of the discount array in the form of a swing low. And here you get further confluences. Imbalance, price comes back, and it has a bearish closure. Again, you have another swing high that gets formed here. So that is just further conviction that price still wants to continue lower. And as you would have imagined, it takes out this overall swing low. So if we have a look at another example here, focusing on your swing points, what swing points are there? You have the swing low, and it has a heavy displacement away from that swing low. You have these swing highs over here. If price was to reverse bullish from here, these swing highs should become your draws on liquidity. If you keep playing price out, look at what you get there. A swing high gets formed and a swing low gets formed. This swing low stays protected and your fourth candle breaks away from this swing high as well as this swing high. So that means this is where you had your market reversal. We are now looking for a bullish scenario to play out here. Our higher time frame direction is now bullish. So that means we are looking for price to retrace back into discount rates and ideally create swing lows to support price and go higher. So here, if you keep playing price out, comes down into this bullish order block, and what would you have guessed? It creates a swing low. This swing low took out this swing high and this swing high. So you can see that in this section in price alone, right? Swing lows were constantly staying respected. And every time a swing low gets created, you had heavy displacements higher. And those displacement higher took out the swing highs that were created in your retracement move. So these swing highs were just engineered liquidity for price to displace higher because your higher time frame direction is bullish. So that means because we had already taken out this swing high, this should ideally be our next draw on liquidity and possibly even this draw on liquidity over here. Because if you zoom out on a higher time frame, this is just one large market maker buy model. So if you remember what I said, after you had your swing point get formed, this is where on a lower time frame you have already had that market reversal and further respect of discount arrays and disrespect of premium arrays in a bullish scenario when a swing low gets formed. So that means your fourth candle you are anticipating for price to continue higher. Right, we've already had three candles, one, two, three. So the fourth candle you could be looking for longs here. This is where I will jump onto the 15 minute. At the open, 1 a.m. New York time, this is the open of your fourth four hour candle. So that means two ways you could go about playing this. You could even look for another confirmation. Or here, because your previous candle has already given you another break to the upside and it's left behind imbalances, such as here, or this mitigation block over here. When your four hour candle opens and it gives you a slight retracement lower, this is where you could have an immediate entry. Stop loss just below there, because that's a swing low, right? You are still on the lower time frame in a bullish direction. So swing lows should ideally stay protected because if price came down and took out this swing low, this is a significant swing low because it was formed in an imbalance. So that would give you a significant market structure break. And you can look to target either this overall drawn liquidity or a fixed R, let's just say 1.5R. The reason why I am not so keen on targeting this overall drawn liquidity is because if you jump up onto a daily time frame, price has already taken out this significant swing high in the form of your buy side liquidity. So that means it's likely that we could anticipate a deeper retracement on the daily time frame which is essentially a very deep retracement on your four hour or one hour before price continues higher and takes out this draw on liquidity. But this doesn't mean that it's impossible for price to just expand higher and take out these draws on liquidity in one go or one large expansion move. It's just me personally, I would rather be safe with my take profits. So hence why I would look to target a 1.5R, fixed R, playing price out, 
you can see price continues higher and takes your take profit. So that's a very solid trade. So you can see how the fourth candle after this swing low was implemented to support price higher off of this imbalance in a higher time frame bullish direction. This fourth candle was just another continued bullish expansion and your fifth candle gave you another expansion, right? You keep playing price out. You can see that price retraces after taking out this buy side liquidity. Because if you look here again, as price is fractal, it's the same thing. One, two, three. On a daily, this is another swing low that gets formed off of this bullish order block. In your overall higher time frame bullish direction. And you can see how the fourth candle follows the same thing. The fourth candle gave you that bullish expansion after your swing low gets implemented. So after the fourth candle, it becomes slightly difficult to anticipate whether price is going to keep expanding higher or expanding lower. Hence why when you're looking to trade off of swing points, always focus on the fourth candle. The fifth candle gives you that retracement and the sixth candle. And that is where we are at current price action. If you look at this current price action, swing low, full body closure past that swing low. And here a swing high gets created. So this could be an anticipated market reversal on the daily time frame to possibly continue lower into this draw on liquidity. So now this is the beauty of your swing points, right? Remember, we had this swing low that supported price to go higher, but now this becomes your drawn liquidity. So you can see how it's all based on what the current price action is currently printing. If it's printing another swing high and a swing low that gives you a market reversal, swing lows should become your draws. Vice versa, if it prints a swing low and it, and it takes out a swing high, then ideally swing highs should become your next draws on liquidity. So here, because we had a swing high that gets implemented and a swing low that gets taken out, this is where we can anticipate for this to become your next draw liquidity. And depending on your overall higher time frame, you could anticipate a possible deeper retracement to continue higher or possibly even a complete market reversal. All you have to do is wait for more candles to print. Look at the swing points that form, which swing points are being disrespected and which swing points are being respected. Because from that, that will solidify your direction in the market. And from there on, you could determine what becomes your next draws of liquidity. So this is probably my most favorite concept. And this is the first video of many, but this should give you a basic overview of your swing points. So to conclude, expect more videos in the future in way more detail on these swing points. But for now, hopefully you learned that you only need three candles in your trading to have an edge in the markets. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.